I'm here with my May wrap up and I read less books in May than I have in any other month this year but I think that that's mostly because I read so many books in April that I needed the month of May just to recover from that and I still read a decent amount. I read six books so I'm going to tell you about them. The first book I'm going to talk about is my reread which I listened to as an audiobook because if I don't talk about it first I'll probably forget and that was The Hero of Ages which is the third book in the first era Mistborn series by Brandon Sanderson and like I said this is a reread for me and I really enjoyed it. I read it for the first time last year and really enjoyed it then as well but I feel like the reasons I enjoyed it when I read it the first time are kind of different to the reasons that I enjoyed it this time so last time it was all of the tension and the build-up and the suspense that made me really enjoy it and I still enjoyed all of that this time too but what I enjoyed more about it was the intricacy of the foreshadowing that was happening not just in this book in the earlier two books in the series as well but because I knew what was going to happen I was able to pick up on it more and so I was able to enjoy it more. I can't tell you what the third book is about because that would be spoilers but Mistborn is about a world that has been dominated and ruled by the bad guy for a thousand years and the downtrodden Scar population want to overthrow the Lord Ruler because their lives are really difficult because of the way he chooses to rule. The stakes are continually rising throughout the entire trilogy. I really enjoyed the final book. I have to say I don't love the ending. I kind of wish the ending had gone slightly differently but I'm not mad about it or anything. I just kind of wish that some different choices had been made. What I do want to say and want to make really really clear though is that while I recommend this series and I recommend the audiobooks as well, I do not recommend reading the third book for the first time as an audiobook because I think that if you're listening carefully enough you can figure things out that you're not supposed to know until really near to the end of the book and so I wouldn't want anybody's reading experience to be spoiled because of the narration which is fantastic I just don't think it's a good choice for a first read so just bear that in mind. The next book I'm going to talk about is Glass Sword by Victoria Aveyard which is the second book in the Red Queen series and I read Red Queen <laughs> in April which was a reread but I hadn't read this book before and I have mixed feelings about it. There were some elements that became a little bit repetitive in my opinion and there's a trope in here that I'm not overly keen on. The, the series in general is very trope heavy which I don't mind, there are a lot of tropes that I really enjoy, it's just that one of the ones that was included in here is one that I'm not particularly a fan of. I also didn't really enjoy the character progression of our protagonist. She slightly irritated me because I felt like she became almost a very different person for the majority of this book and whilst it was kind of understandable in the circumstances she was in. I didn't feel that it was necessarily particularly organic in her case. So, but I did still enjoy the book and I did still like where we ended up at the end of this one. So I do still plan to carry on with the rest of the series. I just found the beginning great, the ending great, the middle chunk was just a little bit repetitive and frustrating. Once again this is a book two in a series so I can't tell you what this one is about but the Red Queen series in general is a fantasy world divided so we have the reds who are the common folk and the silvers who are the elite and the aristocracy. Our protagonist is a red who 
finds herself thrown into the silver world and has to deal with that. Like I said, it's a very, very trope heavy series, but I don't mind that. I like some tropes on occasion. I like a nice easy read and this series is just that. So if you're looking for fantasy that doesn't take a lot of effort, then this is a pretty good series for that because it's very easy to read. Next I'm going to talk about Nevernight by Jay Kristoff and I'm actually not going to talk about this one for too long because I did do a full review of this book which I will link up above for you in case you are interested. This is the first book in a trilogy and it follows a character as she goes to a school for assassins which usually is a trope that I would really enjoy but I really struggled with this book and it wasn't the characters and it wasn't the plot it was the writing which just did not suit my reading tastes whatsoever. There are lots of footnotes which are used for world building which I didn't like and for humour which wasn't my cup of tea and I didn't find funny and the story is told sort of in third person but by a narrator so it really is an old school narrative style in terms of the kinds of things that you see in fairy tales when you're younger. It's that kind of feeling in terms of the narrative style but the narrator is quite sarcastic and I found a little bit patronising and I felt sort of talked down to. Like I said I'm not going to get into masses of details here because I did do a full review of the book but I liked the premise, I didn't particularly like the execution. Then we have Illumine by Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman and I was a bit nervous about reading this one because I didn't get on with Nevernight which is also by Jay Kristoff but this was the sister book club pick for the month and my sister and I decided to read this one together. So we started reading it together, I finished it the weekend that we started and then my sister finished it a few days later. So I will include her thoughts in a future vlog once I see her, but for now I really really enjoyed this book. It was such a fun format. It's written as a set of log entries, copies of emails, copies of instant messaging chats. All sorts of different mediums are used to tell this story which is a story following characters as they are on spaceships that are escaping from a land or a world that has been attacked and they are fleeing but then something goes wrong on the ships and there's a breakout of a virus and there's all sorts of artificial intelligence and science fiction elements in this. I don't read a lot of science fiction but I've read a lot more science fiction recently than I usually do and it's actually making me wonder why I don't read science fiction more often because inevitably I enjoy it and I really enjoyed this one. It was a very quick read although it's quite, it doesn't look particularly big but it's a very heavy book and it's nearly 600 pages but it did only take me a couple of days to read it just because of the format that it's written in. I found it really really enjoyable. I liked the characters, I was invested in the plot and I'm actually really looking forward to picking up the rest of the trilogy. Then we have Mirage by Samaya Dowd which is one of the books that my friend Nisha sent me for my birthday because it is one of her favourites and although it's not necessarily one of my favourite fantasy books ever I did really enjoy it. I found this book very relaxing which I know sounds a little bit strange but I tend to read books quite quickly. Not because I'm a fast reader but because if I don't spend a lot of time reading and get through books quickly I can lose interest in a story because my own reading pace affects the pace of the book and so I end up not wanting to carry on which I inevitably do because I recognise that that's a problem with me and not the book but it's just a thing. So this one I didn't feel that way. I felt quite happy to take my time and spend some time in this world. It follows a character 
who has to pretend to be the princess as almost a well as a body double to protect the real princess from harm and so the plot of this book isn't particularly fast paced it is definitely more a character led and world led story although this is a fantasy book I think it's almost sci fantasy because there is some interplanetary travel going on and there's sort of advanced technology and usually you find with fantasy that it's based on a more archaic way of life whereas this is definitely a futuristic way of life which was a nice change and like I say I don't really know how to explain this book other than to say I just found it a very calming read which I didn't feel the need to rush through and that's possibly why I didn't read as many books this month because I really took my time with this one and it's not even that long it's only 307 pages but it probably took me about a week and a half to read read it just because I just felt no pressure to rush through it which was different and I quite enjoyed it. And then finally in the month of May I read Finale by Stephanie Garber which is the final book in the Caraval series and I read Caraval in March and Legendary also in March actually I was going to say April but no I didn't I read it in March and then this was part of the fairy loot collector's edition box for this book and I promptly picked it right up and I really enjoyed the finale <laughs> in this series it was it was enjoyable we got to spend time with our characters who we've learned to love throughout the series and there was a little bit of mystery I think that things got a little tiny tiny touch repetitive towards the end of the book which I clearly can't go into the reasons why. I'm, I tend not to be a fan of when things start to get a little bit repetitive in books. I'm like okay that didn't work try something else. Don't keep trying the same thing which clearly isn't working. That's just a pet peeve of mine so it may not bother other people but it it frustrated me but it wasn't it wasn't a major issue that's being very nitpicky. I really enjoyed this book. The series is about two sisters who go to the Caraval which is kind of like a magical carnival with a mystery I want to say. So that's kind of what book one is about and I can't tell you about book two and three because spoilers but I enjoyed reading this book, I enjoyed the series in general and I'm really glad that I picked picked up the series at all. I think the only reason I really picked up the series when I did is because I knew that the collector's edition box from Fairy Loot was coming out and so I wanted to be able to get that so I picked up the series and I'm really glad that I did. I really enjoyed it. Again it's just a fun easy YA fantasy series that is enjoyable and I mean unpopular opinion but I like when there's romance in fantasy and the romance in this trilogy is cute and I enjoyed it. And that's it just a quick one this month because I didn't read as much as I usually do. Please let me know down below what you read in the month of May and whether you enjoyed it, whether you've got any new favourites, whether there's anything that disappointed you. I want to hear all about it and that's it for this one. Thank you so so much for watching. If you like this video and want to see more like this from me then do think about hitting that subscribe button and I hope to see you here again soon. Thanks! Bye!